Westwood's Legend of Corandia series has already proven itself to be a great addition to the fantasy adventure game market. They've got great graphics, cool music, and a sense of humor. And an evil, ambitious, demented jester named Malcolm. You don't get a lot of those. Right. Well, Corandia 3 Malcolm's Revenge is entirely from that jester's point of view, and it tends to change the tone of the game somewhat. You mean like the fact that the first music you hear in the game is this? Yo, 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 check those fresh colors. Malcolm be deaf. Word. Yes, we finally learned the truth behind this poor, troubled soul who laughed his way through his tears. Ugh, stop that TV movie stuff. You're giving me hives. From his early childhood, Malcolm has been torn between his good and bad consciences. Until the latter beat the ever-loving karma out of the former. So now Malcolm is followed everywhere by his bad conscience, Gunther, who has swollen to fat Elvis proportions. So what are you saying, that this somehow justifies his killing the king and queen? Society's to blame, that kind of thing? No, actually it looks like Malcolm didn't do it, and you're trying to prove his, I mean, your, innocence. That sounds like a really normal adventure game plotline, and it sounds completely inappropriate for Malcolm. Well, there are a couple of unusual elements that reflect the twisted mind at work here. There's a studio audience effect that laughs at your dialogue. <laughs> And, like most studio audiences, its reactions have nothing to do with the actual humor value of what's happening. It's entirely randomized. Thank goodness you can turn it off. <laughs> oh, shut up. And then, of course, there's helium mode. Which makes everyone talk like this. But we won't go into that. <laughs> While the game uses the same basic interface as the previous Carandia games, the menu doesn't appear on the screen until you move the mouse to the bottom of the screen. That's a nice touch. You can enjoy full-screen graphics most of the... Say, what's this? That's called a moodometer. It lets you choose whether to be nice, sarcastic, or lie your bells off. This Malcolm, he's a complex figure. So enough of the bizarre gimmicks. Let's talk about how this sucker actually plays. Really well, actually. As usual, the graphics are great, with spectacular rendered cutscenes, and a few nice bits that have even been incorporated into the gameplay. Like the frog here. The voices are lots of fun. Malcolm's has changed a little. A little? Suddenly sounds like the Mark Hamill Joker from the Batman cartoons. Ah, smell that dairy air. Also, the game is quite flexible. There are a few ways to complete each puzzle, and innumerable opportunities for mischief. It's true. No one expects Malcolm to be a nice guy just because all of a sudden he's the player character. So, whenever you do something that advances the plot, or is just really obnoxious, you get points for it. And if you make a really stupid mistake and die, and you haven't saved in a while... You're burnt toast, and you swear off adventure games for a month? No, you click the second chance button and return to action right before the moment of crisis. That's a nice improvement over the first two Corandias. So, what's wrong with Corandia 3? Very little. It plays beautifully, it looks and sounds fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we need at least one con to balance out all these pros. I'd love to help you, but the only thing I can come up with is that not everyone will appreciate the sick humor in this game. You mean like hypnotizing squirrels and recycling them into juggling ball? Yeah, that's a pretty good example. But overall, if you enjoyed the first two Corandia games, you'll probably like this one even more. And even if this is your first Corandia game, you'll laugh just as hard.